Greetings. Hello. Welcome back, everyone. I'm excited to be with you today. This is Patty Bennett. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I blog every day at pattystamps.com. And today we are going to be talking about this beautiful Golden Garden Acetate Overlay specialty paper and how it coordinates with the fine art floral designer paper. So welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are joining me live, I'm so excited that you are here. Thank you for joining me. Hi, I see Kathy, Sandy, Lena, it says 11 other people. Welcome, welcome. So if you see the little red live button right there, that means that you have found me live on Facebook. And if you don't see that button, you might be watching a replay on my blog or on YouTube or, or a replay on Facebook. And that is great as well. I will try to watch for live questions though. So I would be happy to answer your questions at the end. I have lots and lots to cover with you. I have several samples and lots of tips for using this gorgeous acetate um, gold gilded printed acetate paper. It's just so beautiful. You're going to love this. If you haven't used it, I do hope that you will pick up a few tips and learn a few things today. So I hope everybody is doing well. I think I logged on just a moment early, so I just wanted to make sure that I give everybody a minute to find the live. Oh my goodness, Kimberly, Jackie, Denise, Stacy, Donna, Betty, Dawn, uh, Summer, Truly, Truvy, Kay, Kathleen, Donna, hello everybody. So good to see you on here from Winnipeg, Canada. Hey Pat, how are you? Um, good to see you on here and Marjean. Hi, everybody. All right. I think we are at about the top of the hour. If you have found me live, this is one of my weekly Facebook live crafting videos. On Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific time, I bring you some kind of a project or a suite or a tip or something in the Stampin' Up! catalog to help you understand and use the products more effectively. Today, this is what we are talking about, the Fine Art Floral Suite. It's a beautiful suite of products. It is, if you saw my review, you know it's my favorite, favorite, favorite suite in the whole catalog. Love this. And we are talking about the January to June 2021. So if you're watching this after that time, these products may not be available. I, I don't know for sure if they're going to carry over at all. But today we're talking about this up here, and this is called the Golden Garden Designer Specialty Acetate. So we'll look at that. I'll show you how to use it, how to adhere it to your projects, and different things you might be able to do with it. We're going to pair it with the beautiful Fine Art Floral Designer Paper. And here is just a look at the patterns in that package. They are 12 by 12, so you do get full-size 12 by 12 sheets, but this is a sampling of the 12 different patterns. So we're going to look at how it overlays and matches to a couple of the patterns and then how you can also use it on some of the more kind of solid but, but yet patterned paper. Just beautiful. I think you're going to really love this. At least I hope so, because I do. <laughs> so welcome again. Thank you to everybody who has joined. I will remind you up here, I put the dates. All of the projects that I show you today will be on my blog, pattystamps.com, January 30th and 31st of 2021. And I will go back and do a direct link in the description, but I just wanted you to uh, know that you'll find them there on those dates. So what are we talking about here? This acetate, I'm just going to show you quickly. Do you see here how it is an overlay? So this is a piece of gold printed acetate. And we're going to actually look at the back because the back is silver. And it overlays, <clears throat> pardon me, it overlays and matches onto a couple of the patterns in the fine art floral. So I'm going to show you how to match those up and how to use those. But I just wanted to give you just a quick taste of kind of where we're headed with this. And then we'll backtrack and I'll show you all the, the three patterns and how to use them. 
All right, so there are three patterns, and I'm sorry, I know that they're very reflective because of the acetate. I just have them laid on top of white cardstock just so you can see them for this video. But this is one of the sheets, and it's just, as you can see, a full pattern of all this gorgeous gold gilded uh, floral pattern. The back of all three sheets is the same thing, but in silver. So if you would prefer to do something with a silver side, and maybe you want to do kind of cooler tones or something, then you just flip it over. Okay, so that's the first thing to note about these. The second pattern is this one. It's very similar to the first, but you'll notice that it has sort of this edge here with blank space, and I'll show you why that is. It, too, is silver on the back. And then the third pattern is kind of this, um, I don't know, mosaic, um, what would you call this? Geometric mosaic? I guess. Something like that, right? And on the back, same thing but in silver. Hang on just one minute here. I can hear myself ever so faintly on here, even though I swore that I had my iPad muted, but I was hearing myself. That's really weird. Okay, sorry. I hope you didn't hear that. I hope it wasn't distracting. So those are the three patterns. And I'm going to show you how they coordinate with the fine art floral paper or other products. So here's that first one that we looked at. And you can see, if you look right through, how it's a loose outline of this beautiful pattern in fine art floral. And I think it's just amazing. And of course, you have to match it up. It doesn't match all four directions. So you have to turn it until you find that these big flowers and the leaves are kind of being outlined. So that's the first one. That second one that we looked at coordinates with this piece. And it's because it has that kind of a cutaway blank area up here. So you can see that this one will overlay right onto there. Now you cannot flip these two to the silver side and expect them to line up. They do not. I mean, you could still, I guess, use that, but to me that's very busy and sort of just creates some confusion. So to me, it's better to use it on the gold side. There is also this piece, which is very similar, and you might think, oh, okay, well, I can use it on that one, but it does not coordinate with that. Again, it just makes it really busy, so that to me would be a no. I, I would only use it with this one, but you could overlay any of these to the back side and just have a very beautiful, soft background. So that would be the background of this. So you could do that, most definitely. And then the third one, the mosaic or geometric one, I found that I liked it a lot on this piece. So this one just sort of looks like, you know, brush strokes, beautiful brush strokes, not just, but beautiful. Um, let's see. And oh, this one. So this one also, I mean, this one's a little bit uh, bright and jazzy for me, but to me, when you put that on top, I think that's really gorgeous. It kind of tones both of them down, and I really like that. I really think that's pretty. Uh, one thing to note on these, all the acetate sheets, the window sheets that we have, you can see here I've peeled a little bit back so I can show you. They all have a protective plastic layer. And if the edge is not peeling a little bit, like this one was, you would never know. Honestly, you cannot tell. So if you have used it without peeling this off, it's not a big deal. If you don't peel it off, really, it's not a big deal. But you can peel it off. I personally really can't tell the difference of leaving it on or peeling it off. But just so you know. So if you see, um, like I noticed down here, that in the packaging, this started, sort of started to roll and you're thinking, oh my gosh, mine is defective. It's not. Just peel it off. Just peel the whole thing away. And I don't know, you can recycle the plastic or whatever. <laughs> One last 
thing here, I thought that the silver side looked gorgeous with the blue. I think that's stunning. Isn't that pretty? So possibly the gold side with the warm orange tones or the, the silver side with the blue. So that's a couple of ideas for you. You can also experiment with just cardstock. So you can just pull out scraps or quarter sheets or full sheets or whatever and just start experimenting and looking at all the different ways that this looks on um, on cardstock. And you can do that with the floral designs as well. So if you just wanted to, oops, I'm sorry, I hit the camera. Sorry about that. If you just wanted to say, maybe take this Rococo Rose and put it behind there, that's gorgeous. You could just leave it at that. You would not have to pair it with the fine art floral paper. So um, just experiment with that. Experiment with sort of the plain patterns like these, as well as just cardstock, and see what you like and pair it up in any way that you like. There's, there's really no right or wrong with this. So let's look at how I would suggest that you attach these layers. And if you have a different method, that's totally fine. Um, if you want to experiment and do things differently, totally fine. But I would suggest that you peel the plastic. And if, if you're having a hard time getting it, you can take the point of um, a paper piercer or your snips and just sort of grab it. But before you put ad, um, adhesive, like I'm going to use the seal, before you put that on the back, you may want to peel this because wouldn't that be kind of crazy if all of a sudden your card started peeling apart and, it, you know, and then like the acetate came off and that protective layer stayed on. That would be kind of crazy, wouldn't it? <laughs> so we're going to use this piece and I'll show you how I adhere and cut, and then we'll look at lots and lots of card samples. All right, so here's what I did. And again, if you have a different method, it's fine as well. So peel off the plastic, and then I take my either seal or stamp and seal plus, whichever you prefer, it doesn't really matter. And I try to find sort of some darker areas, and I'm just putting little bits, not too much, just here and there, enough to keep the two sheets together. So that's my first step. And I'm just going to just try to, <laughs> without them sticking, let's do it this way. I'm gonna match up the bottom corner. And there we go, all right. So now I'm just pressing those together. So they're only stuck in those few little areas. That's my first step. And then when I am ready to make my cards, I get out my trimmer. And what I do is for a sheet like this, I would start cutting it in four inch strips. To me, that's just kind of the easiest way to start. So I am going to cut through both of those layers and I have a four inch strip. I'm going to cut this one into another four inch strip. And then I would look at this one and say, okay, this down here will probably be a great card front for my four by five and a quarter, which would get layered onto another card. So there's one. And then this one, you could decide, do you want your five and a quarter to be up here or do you want to kind of shuffle it down and put it here? What I did was I just cut off a random amount at the top. Then I measured five and a quarter. And that gave me kind of an in-between. It wasn't a ton of that blank space, but it was enough just to be a little bit different. So that was another one. And then if you wanted to, what you could do is make square cards, which if you follow me, you know that I make a lot of square cards. I just think they're really fun. So then you would just do four inches, four inches, four inches. So that would give you three card fronts. And then this one, you can see, if you cut a card front up here, you're gonna have a ton of blank space. 
So what I would do on this one is do my five and a quarter down here, and then I would make this one into a four inch card. And I would, I don't know, I haven't used this yet. I have a little pile of them this size, but I would keep this and use it as a window sheet for a shaker card. So then you have that one instead of a whole bunch of blank space. Okay, so now that we have those card fronts, then what I would do is as I am going to actually make the card, and let's just, I have like some spare die cuts over here. So let's say on this one that I wanted to put, maybe I would do, that's gonna cover up too much. Maybe I would be putting my greeting down here. So what I would do is lift this up, knowing that it's only kind of tacked down in a couple of spots, and I would put quite a bit of adhesive right there because I know I'm going to put my little die cut and my greeting right there. And that's enough to hold it together. So you would just look at all your different cards, how you decide you're going to make them, where the greeting is going to go, and then you just simply separate the two pieces. See, like this one is only attached right there. So you definitely would want to lift it up, put a little more adhesive. Maybe you're going to have a ribbon that goes across or something, and that's where you could add some more adhesive. So that's kind of just the, the basic info of using it, cutting it, adhering it. And let's look at samples so I can share more tips with you. have lots of ideas here. So same idea with the four and a quarter by, or excuse me, four by five and a quarter or four by four, but this is with that other pattern. So this is the one that's the all over pattern. And I'm going to show you some cards that I made with these two ideas. But what I wanted to specifically say was that these patterns or the colors really in the fine art floral go amazingly well with lots and lots of colors of cardstock. So you can see here, I have used Rococo Rose cardstock and put a Rococo Rose flower and some of the Rococo Rose Oso Ombre celebration paper, just a, a die cut circle or punched circle. And all of a sudden this takes on a beautiful, soft, dusty rose tone. Isn't that neat? And then you could step it up, go a little brighter, and I've put it with the Flamingo cardstock and some Flamingo ink, Flirty Flamingo. And then look how much brighter this looks. All of a sudden, it looks like you're, you're using Flirty Flamingo paper. Or tone it down. Maybe you just want to do some vanilla or white or combine them. I've used a vanilla thick cardstock base but done a white die cut and stamped on white. So you can combine those and just sort of make it very soft. And the gold, I think, is really what then stands out on that one. You can go really zippy and do Poppy Parade, one of my very favorite colors. Poppy Parade Flower, Poppy Parade Greeting. And then all of a sudden you just have something that totally pops. No pun intended. <laughs> And one of my other very favorite colors, Calypso Coral. This one is uh, Calypso Coral and Poppy Parade on the flower. That's like probably my favorite combination of all Stampin' Up! colors. I love it. And then I just also, I don't know if you noticed, I used all different greens on my leaves. And you can do that. You can pick up any green in this paper. So putting that strip here. This was one of those extra little strips. Where did my pieces go? Um, as I was cutting, as I was cutting that first sheet and you noticed how I ended up with some extra strips. So you can use those to overlay on other cards. So you could do what I did here and flip it over onto the orange side and you could do something like that. And that's where your adhesive could go. So there we go. That's my first tip is to think about all the different colors that you might use with your um, fine art floral designer paper and your golden garden acetate 
overlay paper. Mouthful, but I did it. <laughs> okay, let's look at our next set of samples and our next set of tips. So here we have the piece that I cut up for you, and it was the one that had sort of the blank part up in the upper right corner. So these are all samples with that piece, and it's, you remember, we just did that a few minutes ago. So it's, it's pieces like this that have sort of that soft blue background. So I've used those pieces in these five samples, and again, doing... Uh, softer colors like your pool party with the pool party ribbon or here accenting the green um, my favorite combo the, the this one is flirty flamingo and poppy parade a beautiful combo with the poppy parade cardstock this one I thought could be a really cute valentine like how fun is that right just doing love and some of the little heart resin hearts red ribbon and um, the heart die cut and then here I mean you can just go like really overboard and just keep layering from the um, stamp set which I should have shown you sorry in the beginning the art gallery stamp set and the floral gallery dies are part of this whole suite and I'm sorry I didn't show you that in the beginning I had it right here but that is what I have been using to stamp and die cut the flowers I'm sorry this is reflecting. I'm just looking at the camera over here and I can see this is reflecting. Let me just, let me see if this helps to get that reflection off of there because I wanted to show you a couple other things on these cards. One thing I wanted to show you is this cute little border. And you might think, oh, it looks like a punch we had a long time ago. But what I actually did was I used the Ornate Layers dies and I die cut this one right here. And then, so you can see right here that it looks just like this. After I die cut the whole rectangle, I cut it in strips so that I had four strips. And this piece right here is just a little like quarter inch, half inch wide piece like that. And it does not have that center rectangle. But that's just a way to stretch your investment in different products and you could do that with any of these you can die cut a color and then just cut the edge into strips and use that as a fun little border other thing that i wanted to show you on these cards is what i would call suggested coordinating products <laughs> And the first thing I wanted to show you was some of the beautiful ribbons that will make your projects just look amazing with this suite. So if you want to pull out and accent the blue background of this particular piece, I've used the Pool Party Sheer Ribbon on this one and the Pool Party cardstock. So that's one thing that you might want to look at for a coordinating product. This ribbon is called, I think it's called Fine Art Ribbon, yes, and it's in this Fine Art Floral Suite. It's very soft, and I've used it here on this one, just tied a bow, also used it here. And it looks great with the golden or gold acetate overlay, beautiful. You could use gold cord, and this is in the Forever Greenery Suite. It's a like a dual pack. It has two different um, ribbon, not, not ribbon, but like twine and trim. I guess that's the right word. So you could use that. You could also use the gold metallic edge vanilla ribbon if you want to go accenting um, with the gold. And then you might also want to use this one, and this is called the Blushing Bride um, metallic ribbon and this is I believe in the for for love you forever suite but this also looks really beautiful with these colors and the gold really picks up the gold accents so there's some ribbons that you might want to look at ribbons and trim the other thing that you might want to look through your stash would be for gold gems so I've used the gold gilded gems on some of these 
the gold glitter dots on a lot of these. <laughs> And the opal rounds also would be beautiful, especially if you're using the silver side. It's really going to pick up that sparkly uh, part of the paper. So those are just some little added products that you might want to think about using. Then let's look at the last package of samples. And then I do actually have some bonus samples over there, but this is the, that, I still don't know what to call it, geometric, a mosaic, what, what would you call it? Uh, comment and let me know. I'm not positive what I would call that. But anyway, that third one that we looked at, the silver side and the gold side. And so these are some samples that I have made with that. And I think they're all pretty. I mean, well, I like all of these. This is my favorite suite. So of course, I'm going to love this. <laughs> Mosaic, Denise says. Okay, um, sand dollar. That, yes, you are so right, Shan. It does look like a sand dollar. My goodness, I didn't even think of that. That's brilliant. Thank you for that comment. Jen says mosaic. Quatrefoil. Yes, Kelly, that is what this is. You are right. I knew I knew you all would help me out. <laughs> so, um, Cutting it in a circle, I would use dies, not a punch, if you're um, doing a shape. I would not try to punch through that. But these two have the circles. And then just as I showed you with that other sample on the last batch, this is the same thing with the ornate layers, doing a little trim. I think that turns out really pretty. Here's that ribbon we were just looking at. And you can see if you do the Rococo Rose, this looks beautiful. The pool party and the pretty peacock and the that blue that I showed you to overlay this on. I think that's a gorgeous combination. But then brightening it up with the colors. And then this beautiful background with just a small square behind there. You'll find this sample very similar to one in the catalog. So I think those are really pretty. What do you think? I... Um, I, I just, you can't go wrong with this if you ask me. I don't know. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, yes, I crave the uh, ocean as well. Oh, thank you. Yes, medallion, Jennifer. That's a great suggestion. Eva says tile. Yes, perfect. Yes. Um, which gold did you use in the background? Okay, so this card I made when we could first do a pre 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 order last November and the gold leafing was not yet out. So what we did on this card, I stamped this when I was with Cindy. We just sponged some Versamark in the background and we did gold embossing. But it's supposed to kind of mimic the gold leafing, but we just did not have that product yet at the time, but you could do that with the gold leafing. Thank you. Um what color yellow did you use to stamp with? This is saffron and mango and then right in the center I just did um, calypso coral for that smaller sorry I should probably hold this closer any other questions I should have been looking to see if you had questions on these before I moved on to the next uh, batch so one thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you like them. So one thing I wanted to note on here, you, you probably or you maybe noticed this, that the background is Rococo Rose as well as the stamping. And I wanted to show you a tip. You might not have seen this because I blogged this way back in um, November. And you get let me get these cards out. So one thing that I did back in November was I had this ombre paper from the Celebration Demonstrator pre-order, and I experimented with stamping right on the ombre paper. So you have Rococo Rose, and then, oh gosh, this I think was Mary Merlot, and this I believe was Gorgeous Grape. And I just experimented with stamping right onto the paper and then die cutting it. So then this is what you get when you do that. You can get lighter 
shades like these two. You can get darker shades like those two. And it just depends where on the sheet. Oh yeah, Mary Merlot. I wrote it down. Where on the sheet you stamp. So even though it's the same ink, it almost looks really, really different, doesn't it? Like it looks like different ink, but it just depends if you do it on the lighter part of the paper or the darker part. So that is something that you might want to experiment with, with the Fine Art Floral Suite and the stamp set. That's just kind of a little bonus. I know I already blogged those, but I thought you just might like to be reminded of that. And then this is the same idea. And here we are using up that extra strip that I ended up with after cutting out the full sheet. So you could add that onto a card. All right. Yes, the square cards I mail in a regular size envelope because in the U.S., if you make a square envelope, it costs more to mail because the machine doesn't know which way to put it through and which way to read the address. So if you just put it in a rectangular, so like if this was your envelope, just slip it in the rectangular medium size envelope and then it just costs the regular postage. Now, I don't know about other countries, but in the U.S., yes. So I just put it in our medium size basic white envelope. All right. What is the heart die from? The heart is from... Oh, nope, not this one. Hang on. I'll find it. I'll find it. I think it's Many Hearts. Yes, Many Hearts. Let's go back to that sample because I, I think it's beautiful. I'm glad you liked it. So here it is. Here's the sample that you were asking about. Here's the Many Hearts, and it's this big die right here that I used. So it has some just sort of, I would call them solid plain hearts. It has this beautiful extra fancy doily edge and it has so many pieces of hearts. So that's called many hearts. It is number 154308. I always feel like I'm on Home Shopping Network or something when I do that. But just in case you need to write that down, add it to your shopping list. And by the way, if you don't already have a demonstrator that you purchased from, I would be happy to help you. At pattystamps.com, you will find links to order products. You will find links to request a catalog or to contact me. And I'd be happy to help you if you do not already work with a demonstrator. Uh, what size is the circle on the blue square? So this is is from the circle dies and it is let's see I can measure right here just under three inches just like an eighth under three inches so about two and seven eighths roughly and then it's a four and a quarter inch square card where do I get the magnet sheets for my dies stamp and storage so I, I use them on the magnet sheets and then I use their um, envelopes and I will link to that above. If you need links to any of my storage tips or ideas or anything that I store, like my ink pads, my stamp sets, my paper, on my blog, pattystamps.com, at the top, it says my craft room. And if you click that, there's, uh, I don't know, 15 links to everything that I use. So the magnet cards are also on there, but it's stamp and storage. All right, so let me go on to the next batch so that we can wrap this up, and I don't want to keep you too long, but I'm just really, really in love with all of this paper, and these are extra samples. I've already blogged these, but I just thought you might like to see if you didn't already see these. They don't use the overlays, but they do use the stamp set and the paper, so just so you could see a few extra samples. All right, so <laughs> lots and lots of ideas. I hope that you have enjoyed this look at the Golden Garden Acetate. I'm going to hang out for a minute while I spread these out and see if you have other questions about using the acetate, about where to find the samples, how to buy the products, any of that. I hope that this has helped you. I, I found 
this acetate a little bit intimidating right at first. I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do with this? How do I use it? And so I thought that it might be helpful for you to see the whole video of how to use it and ideas and samples. And again, if you're looking for these, I'm going to have them uh, if you're watching live, it'll be tomorrow, January 30th, and then again on Sunday the 31st. Those are all set to blog, and this replay will be on there as well. Yes, I will, Rosamond. All of these will be on the um, on my blog, either these two dates or coming up. So a lot of them have already been posted as well. Oh, good. Thank you, Holly. She says it was very helpful. Thanks, Marlene. You're welcome. Any other questions before I let you go? I do thank you for joining me live. It's so fun to see what questions you have and help answer those and give you measurements and tips and ideas. And um, yes, yeah, Cindy, so fun, right? I love all these. This is just, I could just like hug these because this is my very, very favorite, very favorite suite. It's so beautiful. Oh, Bobby, you are so kind. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Rita. Any other questions I can answer for you? Oh, you're welcome, Susan. And Shirley, thank you. Thanks, Janet. Oh, good. Dawn says she's getting this DSP today. Awesome. You're welcome. Have fun with that. Hi, Elisa. Good to see you on here. You're welcome. You're welcome, Lena. Thanks, Jennifer. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Um, I yeah, thank you. Bobby says they match my garden. That is just maybe that's why I love it so much because it just does remind me of my garden. Thank you. Oh no, Melissa says her order got lost in the mail. Oh no. Oh, Betty, you might want to go back and watch the replay because I showed how to adhere this. I used the stamp and seal, and I showed exactly what my system is for adhering this and how the layers go together. All right. Well, thank you again, everyone, for joining me. I appreciate it. And I try to come on every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And I will have, I have piles and boxes of things to share with you for the coming weeks. So I hope that you'll join me. And I just wanted to say thank you and have a great day. And I will see you next week live. Thank you. Bye-bye.